Let's say we want to test our memory. Let's talk about that. This system has 32 gigs of memory. It's going to take a long time to test, but how do I know that that memory works? All right, I, I built a new computer. I plugged the RAM modules in, and the system boots and installs Windows 10. I don't need to test the memory, right? Well, that's up to you. Because I'm building and shipping this computer, I want to make sure that all of the memory works, not just the memory I'm using. There's a company called Fram, F-R-A-M, and they make oil filters for cars. And I think in the 90s they had advertising on TV talking about the importance of not only changing the oil filter on your car in a regular interval, but choosing a quality one. And realizing the quality one is a little more expensive than the generic brand. And their slogan was, pay a little now or pay a lot later. That's what we're going to do right now. We're going to pay a little now with our time using a free utility called Memtest86. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug in this flash drive. Let's plug it in right back here. It's still like USB 2. Not that it matters, but just so you know. And here we go. It's a blank flash drive. We're going to open a browser. I, I don't care what browser you use. Doesn't matter. And we want to go to uh, memtest86. Now you can follow this. This is intended to be step by step. Right here it says download now. We're going to click that. Not sure why that didn't work. Let's try that one. So there's a pro edition, there's the free. We're going to do the free edition. Image for creating bootable USB drive on a Windows, Linux, or Mac system. Perfect, that's what I want. And let's save it. Just see how fast that is, it's small. Open it, extract it, extract all. Click extract all, and then the, the zip file, all the contents of it get extracted into a folder. So just to avoid any confusion, let's close everything we, don't, we no longer need. We'll do image USB, double click it. Yes. Select the flash drive automatically. We want to use that Lexar Firefly, that's the flash drive. Write the image to the USB, yes. Uh, post image verification, you certainly can do that if you want to. This is the source file. So all I had to do is just check that box and click the right button. Now, it's going to completely erase your flash drive. So don't use a flash drive that has anything on it that you want to keep. Because as soon as this is what this dialogue is, is warning you about, you're going to wipe that flash drive entirely. That's what an image does. Yes. It is correct, they have my permission. Well, that's a 16 gig flash drive. All right, yes. Now, it's warning me again. Second warning. Continuing will cause destruction of the any data that's on that flash drive. And it will be replaced with the image that you've just downloaded, yes. This only takes a moment. So up here at the top, you'll see right in progress. And then here we've got a progress bar. And this is only going to take a moment. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Almost done. Image completed. I wonder if my image completed. Yeah, it did. We're going to close that. We're going to close that. We're going to exit that. We're going to close that. And that is that. I did that on purpose. Just reboot it. And we'll hit F12 and try it that way. F12 should give us a boot menu. And then we can choose the Lexar UEFI right there. Now it's going to boot to Memtest86. And you don't have to touch a thing. Here's my hands. Nothing up my sleeve, right? Computer's just running. We're letting it run. No keyboard or mouse input uh, from me at any point.
want to talk about hands-free. At the top of the screen, it says the test will start in about two seconds. One, zero. And it runs. It's off to the races, and we're off and running. And you'll see the information provided here is the pass below. So I'm looking at the top right. The percentage of that specific test, the test address of the memory that it's using and the pattern that it's using. And then on the left side, you'll see our uh, clock and temperature of uh, the CPU, which contains the L1, L2, and L3 cache on the CPU. It recognizes the memory as 31.8 gigabytes of RAM, and it's running at PC4 25,600, DDR4, XMP 3200, but we do not, I do not have XMP enabled at this time. There are 13 individual tests. So again, if we look at the right upper right corner, it says we are on test four. There are 13 total tests and some memory problems only occur when the memory gets hot. And so for that reason, it will repeat by default, by just leaving the settings alone, it will repeat this series of 13 tests four times. And if it passes, all 13 tests, which on this machine could take an hour or more just to complete one, the first 13 tests, then it'll repeat that a second time, a third time, and a fourth time, and then it'll give you the results. But if at any point during any of these tests, the instant, the very instant it encounters an error, it will be displayed uh, in the blank part where it says time and address mode, pass one of four. Do you see the pass one of four? and then errors zero. So right below that, typically in red or in a different color, it'll alert you to an error. Now, if you see an error, you can stop the test immediately. Then shut your computer off and unplug it from the wall and give it a second to drain the power out of the capacitors and remove a RAM module. If you've got four RAM modules, you can remove two of them. Then rerun the test again. If the error occurs again, remove the two that you left and put the two you took out. If the error doesn't occur, then you've narrowed it down to one of the units you've removed. That's a game of swap. Uh, it is simply the process of reasonable deduction. Sherlock Holmes would be proud of you. But it's incredibly simple. The tool is completely free and everybody can make it. So what are you waiting for? Does your RAM have any problems? And if you've never used that much of your RAM, are you living in ignorant bliss? So a link for MemTest 86 is in the video notes below the video, completely free. It's like watching, uh, watching a pot of water come to boil. It feels like it takes longer if you watch it. This is best to be left alone. Go, go out shopping, go watch TV, go to bed. Like I say, the results will be the results. But if at any time an error pops up, you can stop the test. There's no point in continuing the test. Memory is not repairable. You cannot fix it. You'll have to either uh, replace it or live without it. You do see it's 91% at the, so at the very top of the screen, it says Intel Core i7. And just below that in green, it shows us we're 91% through test 13, and then below that, I think, is a percentage of the, all the tests combined, how close we are to the end. We're close. We're getting there. Many of you watching right now have bad RAM, and you don't even know it because you're not using that area of RAM that's bad. Ignorance is bliss, and if you, you know, want to live with bad RAM, go ahead. The only reliable way that you can know if you have bad RAM for free is to download this utility and use it just as I've demonstrated here today. And so if nothing else, it can give you peace of mind. Even if you don't think you have a problem, it doesn't mean you don't. And so to get that confirmation back, um, that's much more useful than looking at your temps and worrying about how many frames per second you're getting, in my opinion. Thank you for watching this new quick tip series of videos, and I hope you enjoyed it. If so, you can let me know by clicking the thumbs up button below the video. And if you want to be alerted anytime new content is posted to my channel, be sure and click the subscribe button. After that, you'll see a little bell icon appear. 
be sure and click the bell icon and make sure that the notification button is checked and how you want to be notified. That's going to wrap it up for this video. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Until then, bye for now.